Welcome back, Joystick Justice League. I'm Mike Frusios, and wow, it's been two months. This is a new show. It's called JJL Live. Why am I back? Why am I doing videos again after kind of disappearing for two months? Well, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. Let, let's just uh, let's set the tone right now. It took me two months to press the record button on this camera I'm talking to right now. There's a lot going through my head. I've got about 18 pages of notes. Headlines, scenarios, thoughts, things that are delighting me, things that are pissing me off. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down. JGL Live is the new direction of the Joystick Justice League. I really want to take this network back to where I originally intended it to go, back to the basics. I always intended this to be kind of like an AM radio talk show, like about an, an hour long, maybe half an hour, we'll start with a half an hour, we'll see where the go show goes from here, how far I can get through with doing this on one take, that's why it's called JJL Live, it's just me pretending I'm on the radio like I used to do back when I was like 19, 20 years old, back on campus radio, what was great about doing it back then was that when you're out live on the radio airwaves, you get one shot, just like you know Eminem used to say, one shot, one chance to blow, right, you don't get to do a take two. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to slow down, breathe a bit more, talk less out of my throat, more out of my gut, you know, the way you're supposed to, and just have fun with this. You know, that, that was really what the whole point of me doing this in the first place was not only to inform people about video games based on my, my 30 plus years of experience with the medium, but also to do it in an entertaining way that's fun to listen to while you're Clean, cleaning the bathroom or, or making a sandwich or something like that. You know, you can just throw this on in the background. And that's why I'm going audio based for this new show. Depending on my schedule, you know, I work like everybody else. Depending on my schedule, I may actually cut some video clips and some headlines to go along with what I'm saying right now. But I'm not making any promises. Again, it took me two months to press this record button and to feel comfortable talking in front of this camera again. Um, so here we go. This is JJ Live episode one. Basically, the whole premise is that we'll s news kind of stops happening around mid afternoon on a Friday. You know, you'll see a little bit of stuff on the weekend, but generally, all the major video game news happens Monday to Friday. So I'm just gonna kind of compile all that stuff, and by the time we hit the weekend, depending on my work schedule, I'll sit down. We'll go over the week, talk about what's going on in games, what's going on in issues. All from like my kind of admittedly politically charged perspective. In the in the interest of transparency, which has been on on the minds of gamers everywhere for the last two months since the infamous GamerGate um, movement, famous infamous, depending on how you look at it, um, happened at the end of August, and that's basically one of the major reasons why why I kind of hid away for the last two months. I didn't make any videos. A lot went through my mind. And at the same time, I had the double whammy of, of my co-host finding a new direction and a new gig that he had to do. So uh, Joe has now officially uh, left the Joystick Justice League. We do thank him for, we talking as if there's more than me. I thank him, I thank you Joe personally for your contribution to the network. And I wish you the best of luck at Energy Rocks Radio. You can catch Joe on Twitch TV, uh, I believe, uh, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., somewhere around there, on the Energy Rocks Radio channel for Twitch. So that's where Joe's off to. So I dealt with that. I'm over it now. I wish him the best. Gamergate happened, all right? So I'm not going to sit and try to describe Gamergate to you in, like, what do I got, 10 minutes? I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the show down mathematically now because I want to put out like segments that equal up to an hour of about 15 to 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes each. So this first segment, I'm calling, calling The Greek Speaks. It's a new segment I'm going to be doing pretty much weekly where I talk about, I, I give my perspective on maybe like a hot 
button issue in the gaming industry or something to that effect. That I'm, I'm still playing with it, but I feel that calling it the Greek speaks, you know, I'm of Greek descent, um, kind of gives you the attitude of this show. And, and I mentioned how I'm kind of politically charged. I'm not going to make any, uh, I'm not going to try to hide it. I'm very active on Twitter. You can follow me at, at DFLBagBoy, at DuffelBagBoy. But tread with caution, okay? Like, I'm not, I don't just talk about video games. I talk about a lot of things, especially politics and from a certain perspective. If you want, you can, you can play the, the label game all you want. You can, you can try to put me in a box. I'm going to tell you right up front that I am, I, I, I lean li to, in a libertarian fashion. I believe I'm a humanist. I'm also of Christian descent. So that can kind of give you an idea of how, what I feel about morality in the sense that, yes, I may have the big dreaded C word of being a Christian, but I also do believe in equality. And I also do believe in individual freedom and, and the right to choose. So consider me kind of centrist and, and really one, it's funny because one time I came up with, I found something on Wikipedia of all places that almost perfectly describes me. And I hope I don't regret to say this one day, but a South Park Republican, look it up. I kind of like that. That kind of makes sense to me. Maybe that's why I, I'm so obsessed with South Park because I just identify with Matt and Trey's politics. So those are my politics. I try not to bring politics too much into my gaming discussion, but here's the here's the secret, people. And, and here's the thing: people have told me that you shouldn't mix my you shouldn't mix gaming and politics. You'll alienate you'll alienate your audience, Mike. Everything is political. Okay, I got to thank my my first year university film prof, Dr. Angela Stacator. For, like this was like on the first day of school, man. Like I had film 101 or whatever, or film one or whatever it was back in University of Western Ontario. I went to my very first day of film studies. We were gonna watch, um, I think it was The Matrix. Was it The Matrix? Anyway, but the first thing Angela Stacator said was that the first thing you're gonna learn in film studies is that every film you watch is political, and you could hear like this hush or like kind of a gasp, a collective gasp. In the lecture room, it's like, and, and you know, already people are like, what do you mean, like, every film is political? Are you trying to say Dumb and Dumber is political? Are you trying to tell me that, you know, like, Caddyshack is political? And once you, and, and you know, obviously the message is that, yes, every film, every piece of art, every medium, every video game, every song is born of a political context. So, taking us back to video games, everything that comes out as a video game is born of a political context. And you're seeing that more and more. And that's why... I've really got us now just draw my line in the sand and that you know I don't care how many dislikes this video gets, I don't care how many people people talk smack about me in the comments, I support Gamergate, hashtag Gamergate, hashtag not your shield, and the somewhat trending ops guy net, still kind of looking into that one, but it seems pretty legit. But I am not a misogynist, I am not a homophobe, I'm not a racist. People who know me know this, and they don't contest it. There's nothing to contest. And this is what throws the anti-gamer gators out of their stride because they take the terrible, awful actions of a few people who tried to co-opt the movement of trying to find ethics in video game journalism, transparency, and, and the, 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 the end to collusion between journalists and developers. That is what Gamergate is about. It's not about the harassment of women. And I'm gonna tell you right now, okay? I've seen many sources critiquing Anita Sarkeesian's work, and I'm sorry, but I agree with them, all right? That has nothing to do with harassing Ms. Sarkeesian. Because she got a death threat from somebody outside of Gamergate, does not, don't paint the rest of us as misogynist. There are many dangerous flaws in her logic, okay, that basically make her the modern Jack Thompson. And I'm not trying to completely demonize her. I know everybody makes mistakes, but I'm sorry. People that I respect are not looking into this enough. They're not doing the research. You know, developers that have spoken out in support of, of what I consider to be the end of free speech, they troubled me, all right? And really, like, trying to know whether I was even doing the right thing. Two months of, of like, trying to figure, like, am I with the wrong people? Should I be listening to people like Monday Matt? Should I be listening to people like Internet Aristocrat? Should I be retweeting Anadoru Rogue Star Games? Should I be, should I be, am I gonna regret this one day? 
and I'm not, I'm not, I'm no stranger to controversy. If you, again, if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, and as many of the people have unfollowed me this year, and, and that's another thing that happened, like a lot of people unfollowed me, seeing my stance on Gamergate, but not really understanding what it was about, just believing whatever BS MSNBC was saying about it, or, or whatever Gawker was saying, or whatever Kotaku, or Polygon, and Game of Sutra, all these increasingly irrelevant sites that have been exposed as frauds, you know, just, you know, I'm not trying to demonize everybody that works for Polygon or Kotaku, but there's some people that need to go, plain and simple, who are, are, are reminding me of what I got into this to begin with. Like, the whole reason I started Joystick Justice League was to fight bad ethics in gaming media. This happened before Gamergate. Gamergate was just the spark that lit the fire for so many of us that were feeling disenfranchised with this whole industry. And I, and I see a bright future ahead. And that's why I want to, I, I, I had to like press record and get my voice out there. Cause I want to tell people like Leigh Alexander and Steven Totillo that no, gamers aren't dead. They're very much alive, more alive than I could ever think of. Gamergate made me, Please don't get offended, atheists, but gave me a new respect for atheists, all right? As a Christian, I could find an atheist that I could agree with about something else other than religion. About, we could, I could, I, I have new friends who are, who are gay, who are black, who are transgendered, who are Asian, who are this, who are that. All these people that I met through Gamergate, which completely defies what the mass media tries to demonize it as. That is all just a bunch of white cis cisgendered. I love that effing term. Ugh. Thanks South Park for making fun of it. But anyway, just a bunch of white cis shit beard males. I'm trying not to swear too much, but I had to say the S word once. Really try not to swear as much with JGL. But anyway, if you really did follow the movement like I did for like the last two months, you would understand that it, the, all the hype was wrong. That ga gaming is very much alive, and. and, and I, I'm just I'm just proud to be one of them because, come on, people! Like I'm 34 years old. I came up during the NES era. Okay, I my earliest memories were my cousin's Atari 2600, which was the hot toy. But I was too young to really figure out the mechanics. It wasn't until Super Mario Brothers came out when I was five years old that video gaming grabbed me, and then I got my brother into it. And then, you know, some a lot of you youngsters who who are into gaming now weren't there for the dark days when people like myself growing up, we couldn't talk about video games on the schoolyard. We were outcasts, okay? It's not like today where it's still kind of a geeky thing to do, but nobody can really say they're not a gamer because every damn person I know plays some type of mobile game on their phone. So we're all technically gamers, but some of us are more hardcore than other casuals. There's no wrong, there's no right. Some people are cinephiles versus casual movie viewers. Some people are casual comic book readers versus hardcore. There's always two camps, but man, Gamergate, it's, it's just so diverse. So di so many different personalities, so many different views that reject the collusion that was happening between the journalists and developers that reject people like Jack Thompson and Anita Sarkeesian and all the cultural Marxists who are trying to shut down our hobby and, and saying that all video games are violent and sexist when they completely set up these straw man arguments that ignore all of the positive female protagonists that are out there that are just maybe not triple A games but still exist in the market on a store shelf, in a Steam store, in a PlayStation store, an Xbox Live Marketplace. That is what a straw man argument is. Ignoring the fact that some people find Bayonetta empowering versus just the one-sided narrative that she's controlled by the male gaze. You know, this could be another argument. I got about three minutes left till the break. The point is, is that that's my stance on Gamergate. I don't, again, I don't stand for death threats. I don't stand for misogyny, harassment of women. I believe, again, the things that happened to people like Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian and Brandon Wu are deplorable, okay? Nobody supports that within Gamergate. Again, you gotta know that any radical movement is gonna get co-opted at some point, and that's what happened. It's thankfully survived, a little battered and bruised, but it still marches forth. But hey, 
ask the people of Occupy Wall Street what happened to their movement, okay, after it got co-opted and basically smeared in the mainstream media. All right, so Gamergate happened. You know my stance on it. But at some point, even to the Gamergaters, I love you all, but you got to understand that at some point, guys, there's a time for sending emails and there's a time to play video games, all right? And that's what I'm trying to get back to. The love of the hobby that I've been defending my whole life against everybody else, you know, Again, the dark days of, you know, getting bullied on the schoolyard because, oh, you're just a dork who plays Nintendo and little PC games, you know, and we have something to be proud of. And, and to not only know that, it's not just white males sitting in their basement anymore. Gamers are everywhere. And, it, and, and the future is beautiful, people. Sometimes maybe we do need a day of armistice where we can just come together and celebrate the fact that arguably video gaming is bigger than movies. Think about it. Think about it. Which is the bigger industry now? Video games have taken over. Movies are going to be to the 21st century what theater was to the 20th. All right? So just take that and cruise with it. So back to JJL. JJL, in the interest of transparency, is an aggregate of news. Okay? I'm not, I don't live in California. I don't have any ties to developers yet. I hope to change that. I know there's a lot of developers here in Canada I could possibly re reach out to. I'm not big enough. I don't think most people are going to talk to me yet. But at this point, I I follow all the gaming trades. If Almost all. I, I can never follow all of them, but I keep finding new ones every day. And, you know, it's kind. Of, I watch a lot of InfoWars. I'll be transparent about that too. And I'm trying to kind of take cues from shows like that in, in terms of how to deliver the news in a, in a fun way. But not, you know, I'm not into like, you know, start talking about conspiracy theories. It's about fact here. Anything I talk about, and even if I do talk about a conspiracy in gaming, it's always gonna be backed up by headlines and sources. So, you know, I know that a lot of you, you know, baiters out there try to find people, but you gotta remember, I've got research methodology. I'm not gonna promise I'm always gonna be right. You know, always like, you know, sources can be sources, but I'm gonna do the best to get you as accurate information as I can cross-reference with many sources. That's the best I can offer at this point because what else is there? Honesty, truth, and judgment. That's it. So that's what JGL is all about. Stay tuned. We're going to come back more for more. Like I said, JGL Live is a new weekly show. It's about an hour long. Not only talking about my thoughts in that, you know, that segment called the Greek Speaks, but uh, also talking about multi-platform news and general news, starting with some Nintendo news after the break, getting caught up to speed with N Nintendo Direct, and kind of like an upswing in Nintendo's fortune. So stay tuned. We'll be back. I'm Mike Ferruccio for the Joystick Justice League. This is JGL Live. See you in a bit.